Hey everybody, welcome back. It is uh, late night throwing time here at Matthew Kelly Pottery. So uh, we're going to throw some, uh, some platter bowls for my wood kiln. And I'm going to be making these a little bit different than what I normally make uh, in hopes that they make it through my wood firing without warping. So uh, let's go. Okay, we're going to start out here making a, uh, a six pound bowl. I've got two three pound clay balls that I'm going to uh, center in two different clay balls. So I'm going to round the top of that one and then uh, get this one down on the wheel and then throw that one on top of it after I center this one. One of the things I've had several questions about is, uh, is about uh, wider bottom pieces having uh, small cracks in the bottom, a lot of times shaped like an S or a U uh, that show up uh, after the bis fire. And one of the reasons in my experience that that happens is, is especially if you're using a pug mill and the clay comes out of the pug mill like this, because you can see how it's the round shape there. I've rounded that one a little bit. but uh, uh, And then if you take that clay ball and then throw it down this way on the wheel and that's the bottom of your pot, the way the pug mill mixes the clay and spirals it uh, cause it that if you throw the clay ball down this way, it kind of like unspirals or twists as it dries and doesn't dry uh, uh, correctly and so that you will have it so that it, it get that small S crack in the bottom. So the way I solve that is that I take the clay balls out of the pug mill like this and I'm going to throw it down this way. If you've noticed uh, all of my videos, you'll see that. Now when I throw the next one on top, I'm going to throw it the other way, but that's not going to be the bottom of this, play, of this bowl. Um, so that's why that makes a difference and why that uh, um, changes that. So if you've had any problems with, with cracks in the bottom of your pots, uh, you know, definitely uh, uh, pay attention to that next time you're pugging clay. I know it definitely makes it easier to center to throw it down the other way because it's already round, but uh, you're going to have problems with cracks and that's not worth it. So, so I'll just center this three pounder and then I'm going to round off the top there and then I've already rounded the other one the other way so that I, if I when I throw it on top now I've got the two points are going to meet and, and I won't be trapping any air when I do that now I can definitely center six pounds of clay at one time uh, but we have discussed that before uh, on my channel I did a, a, a live stream or a video about that uh, but uh, there's there are times that it just makes it easier on my body and uh, definitely makes it uh, sometimes easier to get the amount of clay centered that I want to center. So the, the, the way that I'm making these quote unquote different than what I normally do is I'm, I'm going to leave these thicker than I normally would for my gas kiln because uh, I've, uh, you know, I've definitely had experience and seen other potters who've had experience with with uh, plates and bowls and those kinds of things uh, warping uh, worse in a, in a wood kiln, especially in a salt glaze kiln. Uh, and the, of course, one of the main reasons that is because every pot is sitting on wads of clay uh, of the wadding to keep it up off the shelf. So you have to kind of account for that. And so you want to leave a little bit more thickness really throughout the whole pot, especially on wider pieces like this. Uh, you could just definitely have a problem with warping if you don't uh, if you don't leave some more thickness there. So these are definitely got, not going to be as large as a six pounder that I would normally throw, but I'm just trying to get a real consistent wall thickness, and like I said, being thicker than than the ones I would normally throw for my gas kiln, and I want to leave a good hefty rim on there as well. My other focus is to get a really smooth inside. Uh, I'm going to come back and do some slip decoration and glaze decoration on the inside of these. So having that smooth curve on the inside will help with, with all of that decoration and with the flow of, of all that decoration as it's being fired. So I'm going to stop after that pull right there. And so my wall thickness, I would assume, is probably a good... Uh, 
you know, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, something like that. And uh, like I said, that's a little thicker than I would normally throw these. I'm gonna try to make sure I have a good little foot on the bottom there as well because it makes it look good, but also if somebody wants to hang these on their wall, uh, they can wrap a wire around that foot and then uh, be able to hang these as a, as a wall decoration piece once they're finished. I try to make sure I don't put too much water on the inside when I'm doing these as well. Because that water will soak in uh, as it sits there and then it'll get, get your clay more and more soft and you'll have a harder time getting the shape that you want out of it. What I'm trying to do here is, is get that nice curve at the base there going down into the bottom. Now that I've got that started, I'm going to come back with, uh, with this tool here. I, I'm using one of these uh, uh, mud tools, uh, plastic rib. Don't use these a lot, but they work really nice for doing this kind of uh, smoothing of the clay and getting this curve really nice in the, in the bottom of a bowl like this. Of course, I'm supporting it a little bit on the outside, uh, on the outside with my left hand as I do this, depending on if I need to push out more, if I need to push back in a little bit with my hand, kind of adjust that. Now I'm gonna take the rim of this and lay it over as well. And then after I do that, I'll have to come back with that rib again and, and do the inside. Need a little bit more water on the outside. Once I do that rim laid over like that, I usually have to come back in and uh, and push down and out on this part of the uh, the wall there as well to kind of get that. All right, that doesn't have quite the exact shape I'd like in there. I've got a little bit of a bump down in there, but uh, it's low enough that I'm going to leave that the way it is before it. Uh, and then I'm actually going to use this piece of plastic and I'm going to put it over the rim and kind of push some of that uh, grit that's come to the surface back down into that rim there. This one was starting to get just a little bit of a wobble too. Um, I've already made four of these uh, tonight and here on the fifth one. Of course, the first one I had on video is going to have a little bit of a wobble. The rest of them were just fine. I think I was pushing this one a little bit farther down than the others that I made, and uh, but I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. If not, I'll recycle it before it's misfired. If I see it's warped or not running evenly, and then uh, I'll have a couple extras so that I can do that if I need to. Yeah, we'll go ahead and throw another one. Maybe before I'm finished here, we'll throw a throw a bigger one. Maybe we'll put three of these clay balls together and throw a nine pound one. See what that looks like. But once again, like I said, I'm gonna round this one first before I put my other clay ball down on there and get that right nice round um, surface there.
Well, I've been, uh, I've, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you've seen that I finished the back wall of the kiln and uh, started to uh, do some good work on the chimney as well. I'm about to have the, uh, the chimney uh, get above the arch, even on the outside of the kiln. And uh, that's exciting news. It's uh, coming along and making good progress on it. Definitely got probably another day or two of work to get the chimney finished. And uh, I've got some real tedious work of uh, getting the space where the dampers are going to be all situated correctly. So that's going to take some time. Uh, having to definitely would have been having to cut a lot of brick the last couple days to fit in all the real uh, specific areas of the chimney. But that's helped me get a little more excited about this all coming together is having that uh, back wall of the kiln done and the chimney going up. It's kind of like other than other than putting the uh, the insulation and the and the castable on top of the arch. That's that's one of the very last things that I had to do out there. So uh, definitely getting close to the firing, and I know I've got a lot of pots to make too. I definitely feel in the time crunch of that too, which is hence why I'm out here <laughs> late at night getting some pots made after the kids have gone to bed. I was out here earlier laying brick in the uh, chimney and then uh, made a couple 20 pound pots. I'll take you guys over there when I finish throwing these and show you the uh, larger pots that I have made for the wood firing so far. I'm really happy with this selection, or the uh, the grouping, whatever. I'm really happy with the pots, the larger pots that I've made so far for the first firing. Um, they turned out really well. Did the slip decoration earlier also on the, uh, uh, the two-part vases that were in my last video. So I'll show you those. Yeah, I really had the, uh, uh, I was really thinking about whether I wanted to uh, make platter bowls or platters and, and trim a foot on the bottom or not. Uh, I definitely like that look, but I'm going to try it this way first, because this is the way I normally make my platter bowls, um, and uh, see if this works okay in the wood kiln. If it does, then that's the way I'm going to continue to do it. Um, not that I'm against, like I said, not that I'm against a trim foot. I love the look of a good trim foot on a, on a bowl, um, or a platter, but, uh, just going to try to stick with what I've been doing and see how well it works and go from there. The first thing I do is before I use my rib down there, I really use my left hand and my middle finger mainly to kind of curve because most time that you have a problem like that last bowl that I made most time if you have a problem with that with that curve it's right there before you reach the bottom so I'm trying to really work on that spot there to get it nice and curved and uh, great thing about these ribs like this is you've got a sharper curve here and a lesser curve here that you can use depending on what part of the bowl that you're working on and how much curve you want to put Got water dripping down my leg, it's itching. Yeah, this one's turning out really nice.
Some of these too, I'll probably come back and alter the edge on them a little bit after they stiffen up just a little bit. Um, give it some more character. One of the reasons uh, I like having this laid over rim on them, uh, but also if you do decide to alter the edge, that it gives a whole nother look uh, with this rim being laid over. It also gives you a nice break point for doing decoration. You can uh, change the, the glazing and the decoration from the rim to the inside of the bowl. get our piece of plastic again you can do this with a lot of different things but I found I got a little plastic around and that really helps just like I said push that grip back down into the uh, into the clay a little bit yeah really happy with that one that's a nice bowl nice platter All right, now we'll uh, give a nine pound one a shot. We'll get three of these three pound clay balls here and uh, center them just like the two and see what we can come up with. Yeah, I'm not sure how much bigger just adding three more pounds will make this, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully I feel that it's justifiably, justifiably bigger. But uh, then again too, when you get to making a wide piece like this, a large bowl, three pounds doesn't really go all that far. And of course I'm leaving this these a little thicker, which will probably make me feel that it's not big enough, but uh,
got the bat pin holes down there on the bat that I'm trying to work around and not catch my finger on the wrong way. That would hurt. Or catch my fingernail on the bat pin hole. I've done stuff like that before. It's no fun. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna do one more pull. Like I said, I don't wanna get it too thin, but I definitely wanna feel like this is wide enough to justify extra three pounds. Of course, I'm leaving a, a good amount of weight in the, in the bottom, in that little spot down there to get that curve. that pull I tried to actually go ahead and start that curve by pushing out and doing that curve and that really worked out well I'll tell you what one thing <laughs> this is off topic but one thing that I, uh, I, I I didn't say I wouldn't say that I really loved uh, English when I was in high school still don't really love I, I don't I wouldn't want to sit down and write a paper uh, you know, do a, do a term paper and all that jazz, that just stuff just does not interest me at all. But one thing in recent years that I've tried to work on uh, a lot is, is to certain words that, that we, uh, especially in America or in the, definitely where I live, is people using words incorrectly, like the words good and well. Uh, doing something good is not proper English. Doing it well, and, and I, I, I catch myself often, or even somebody, you know, a, a common phrase for people is, hey, how's it going? Oh, uh, how you doing? I'm doing good. No, you're doing well. Uh, it's, it's just one of those things. It's, like I said, not a big deal. Like, I'm not going to correct just the average person that I see on the street, you know, or, or even a, even most of my, you know, friends. I wouldn't just call them out, but... Just for myself, it's just something that I've wanted to, to work on and it's something I've started to notice that uh, when I say things and I, and I don't say them correctly like that, it kind of uh, bothers me. So I've been working really hard to do well saying well instead of good. <laughs> All right, this is getting really wide, and I like that, but I can feel that it's starting to lose a little bit. Just, I mean, barely got a little wobble, but I can just tell by experience that if I keep messing with it, that's gonna get worse. So I'm not gonna worry so much about getting that perfect shape on the inside of this one as I am just gonna work on laying this lip over and uh, getting this joker finished. So it can get stop spinning and get off the wheel.
yeah I'm gonna stop right there like I said that's not the exact shape I would love to have on the inside but I know just from my experience if I keep messing with that that's very slight wobble is only gonna get worse and uh, could cause a lot of problems now I did oh there he goes I accidentally picked my plastic up earlier when I was picking up a tool or a sponge Alright, there we go. So yeah, I feel I'm ha I'm definitely happy with that and I'll be uh, be able to do some nice decoration on that In order to get this off. I believe I'm gonna pull my Splash pan apart and uh, take that off the wheel All right, here's the uh, the large pots that I've made uh, so far uh, for this wood firing. And uh, like I said, very happy with those. Other than that first jar that you guys saw me make, um, you're probably gonna hear a lot of echo because I hear it right now as I'm talking. My voice is echoing in all these pots. Um, sounds kind of funny to me. But anyway, um, I've got uh, these uh, four over here are the ones that I made as two-part vases that I did the slip decoration on now. And uh, I've got, uh, I think all eight of these are around 20 pounds each. Uh, these two, of course, I just made and they're a little bigger because they're just made plus uh, the shape of them by having that uh, taper in at the bottom so much, they get a whole lot more height. And it, um, but the volume of these two jugs, I'm really happy with the shape and the volume of those. And uh, really all eight of them, I'm just really thrilled with the shape and the design so far and uh, what I've been able to accomplish throwing these and so uh, just super excited to have this many large pots going in one kiln because I can honestly say probably maybe two or three of these at the most that I would ever fire at a time when I fire with uh, my buddy Joseph and uh, just because of lack of space uh, for putting them in the kiln and uh, but uh, I've got a whole bisque load that's already full of uh, some pictures and other things like that that I've made and uh, I've got some jars here that I've made and some other vases but uh, so things things are going well and uh, here in case I was blocking that I'll get over here so you can see the rest of them uh, but uh, uh, things are going really well. I don't know if I'll handle either one of these two here uh, but I'll, either way I'll definitely do some slip decoration and uh, just have some fun with that and then I'm gonna get on with making some more platter bowls uh, different sizes I might even make a couple really large ones and then make some smaller ones and I've got uh, everything else I'm gonna make all the <clears throat> excuse me smaller bowls uh, coffee mugs tumblers um, who knows lidded jars I've got to make some uh, a bunch of uh, small lidded jars and kind of medium ones as well and so I got a lot of pots to make, but I got like three or four weeks to get everything made and uh, glaze, bis fired, glazed, and uh, start loading. And uh, so we're, uh, we're well on our way, but I've got a lot of work left to do. Hence why, like I said, why I'm out here <laughs> middle of the night throwing pots, but uh, uh, just felt good and wanted to throw some pots. And then I was out here working. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna bring you guys along to show you uh, what I was making. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it and uh, Anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the comments on the last couple videos and all the views and the shares. Uh, it really helps uh, grow the channel. And, uh, of course, it will help with the income of, of uh, uh, the monetization of the videos as well. So, anyway, if you have any questions, as always, leave me a comment. And uh, if, uh, if I got time, I'll definitely get back to you, which I usually do. So, uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Bye.